Blog Talk Radio. Uh... and I would like to welcome you to another episode of Conversations About Your Kundalini Awakening Experience. And I would like to welcome you on this beautiful, beautiful Wednesday or Thursday, wherever you may be in the world. This is a, this is a program about your Kundalini, your Kundalini experiences, and what my Kundalini has to say about the Kundalini Awakening process. Um, before we get started, I'd like to welcome my co-host. Uh, I, I forget the usual thing I say about her, so I'm just going to introduce her as Santara Kundalini. Hello, Santara. Hello, Prism. Hello. It's good to be here. I believe um, the time there in your beautiful part of the world is an hour earlier than mine. Did your clocks go back? Before? I'm three o'clock. <laughs> well, I'm ten. It's normally eleven here. So I just yeah, I just yeah, we realized did, we, did, yeah. we we did have the fallback spring forward. So the spring has ah. just sprung forward. And boy, if you look at the weather around here, you know all the flowers are coming out. So spring has definitely sprung in the middle of at the beginning of March. So it's been a well, fairly warm well. winter here. Um, well, that's cool. Um, I think my Kundalini just alerted me to that fact because I, I, I just suddenly realized, yeah, it's an hour earlier in your part of the world, so I've just arrived. Um, I can begin, though, Chrisin, with um, how I usually do and let everybody know where they can go to if they want to make a donation to Kundalini Awakening Systems and to support the work that Chrisin does. It's very easy. You just go to the website. It's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And in the upper right-hand corner, you will see the Donate button. And it's very easy after that. As we always say, there's absolutely no requirement to send a donation, but all donations are greatly appreciated. Indeed, they are. So, again, it's www ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com Thank you, Chrisim. I'm looking forward to the show. Oh, you're very, very welcome. As am I looking forward to this show. But first of all, I'd like to uh, welcome Elizabeth Dalton-Gonzalez, MJ Henderson. Henderson. I'd like to welcome Manisha, and I'd like to welcome guest number 1719 and guest number 1745, to the chat room, and I'd like to welcome anybody who is listening on their computer or on their smartphone or in the future with the archives. Hello to all you future people. So uh, today, I would, well, first of all, I'd like to let you know where you can go to get more information like this. You can go to the to the YouTube network, and you can uh Press into the search uh, engine window there, chrism.kundalini, and you'll come up to about 310 videos all about your kundalini awakening as, you know, as, as pertains to the way we discuss it here on this program, uh, which, you know, it is without a religious reverberation. It is without a, a you know, an over-dependency on the scientific uh, understandings. It is just basically information about the Kundalini that is given from the Kundalini for your maturation into your process or for those who are exploring the process to give them more information before they begin their practice. So you can go to YouTube. You can also go to the Facebook network. And the Facebook, we have a, a number of communities, one of which is Kundalini Awakening with an exclamation point behind it. We have Kundalini Awakening Systems 2, Kundalini Awakening Systems 3, we have Kundalini Healing, and we have uh, Kundalini Radiance Community. These are all on the Facebook network. On the Yahoo network, we have Kundalini Awakening Systems 1. And we also have on the Yahoo net network Kundalini Virgins 
and Kundalini uh, Healing on the Yahoo Network. We are also in Google Plus with with their uh, communities, and and uh, that is Kundalini Awakening exclamation point on the Google Plus communities network. So you have some options to choose from with regards to to uh, where you get your information. I'd also like to welcome Mr. Fashji, His Holiness himself. He just joined the chat room. Hello, Fashji. Uh, if anybody in the chat room would be so kind as to give us a little bit of a sound check, uh, is the sound okay, Fasti Elizabeth? Uh, anybody uh, feel like giving me a little bit of a of a sound check here, so I'm not speaking too loud to cause it to garble or things like that? They don't give us any kind of a of a sound meter here on this. Uh, on this looks like uh, uh, sound is fine. Thank you, Manisha. Thank you very very much. And thank you, uh, <laughs> Bashji, as well, very, very much. So today I am joined by Rosemary Goliath. As many of you will know, Rosemary is an ex-mother superior of the Catholic Church, and she's here to hit us hard with a ruler on our hands uh, if, because we haven't cleaned up our room. or st- Oh, I'm sorry. That was... <laughs> <laughs> Poor Rosemary's shaking her head. No, no, no. He's not saying that about me, really. It's, it must be a bad dream. <laughs> and uh, Rosemary, Rosemary is here to to give us uh, some more interesting points about her Kundalini journey, and and uh, along the lines with uh, the topic that the Kundalini is picking. We are also joined by a lovely new student in the Kundalini who is visiting the ashram here for the first time. Her name is Anila. Hello, Anila. Hi, Kristen. Hi, everybody. This is Anila. She she is coming down. She just came down yesterday uh, from the, 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 the far, far north land. <laughs> and uh, she is in active uh, appreciation of a of a kundalini activation, which has happened for her within the last 24 hours. So I would like to say congratulations to you, Anila. And uh, with 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 these introductions in place, uh, oh, Rosemary, could could you take off that flying nun's hat? It's it it, it yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, sorry about it. <laughs> I'd like everyone to say hello to Rosemary. Hi, everyone. Uh, Chrisim has this image in his head about what I should look like, like I was a nun in France or something. He enjoys that, so I'll let's just let him. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually, you know, when I, when I was a young person, I was watching Sally Field lift off vertically from the ground with her cool little nun's hat there and it just reminds me of that a little bit so so we'll go ahead and begin uh in this conversation i would like to to discuss the family dynamics of what it is for a person to to go against the grain or go against the the religion of the family or the ideologies of the family with regards to their search and their acquisition of kundalini uh, of, of the awakened kundalini I know that in my family, you know, I am considered the crazy uncle, the crazy brother, the definitely the black sheep of the family with regards to this because I didn't really care to hide it from them, knowing that, you know, whether they knew I had kundalini awakened in me or not would make not a bit of difference to them since they have no clue or idea about what the kundalini is. And furthermore, they have a very, very limited uh, interest in what it is. So so for them, you know, they're just like, oh, what do you do? Brother Chrism? They don't call me Chrism. Uh, and I'd say, oh, well, I, you know, I, I, I give people information about Kundalini. Oh, what that? And I tell them what it is. They go, oh, that's nice. And we change the subject. And so uh, if anybody else has experienced that type of a conversation with your family, I invite you to call in the radio show at uh, area code 
934-0026. I would like, uh, uh, let me see if this is Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez here. Hello? Hello? Oh, I'll just put them back in the blue here. So, uh, Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez, you go ahead and call the show up at 347-934-0026. We have Kundalini at the castle. Uh, This is the very next huge, wonderful, marvelous musical get-together. And this will be taking place in the great state of Washington, right above Oregon. And this is... This is a this is a gathering of Kundalini people. It's a seminar as well, but it's also a gathering of people that have the Kundalini, that have the awakened Kundalini, and and I'm hopeful to see Fashji there, and of course we'll see Elizabeth there. We'll we'll see Amelia, the Celtic Queen of Questionable Comforts. She she'll be there. Rosemary will be there. Hopefully Anilla will also be there, and she's nodding her head yes, and so. This will be ta- this will take place at Manresa Castle, which is a castle in the, in a town called Port Townsend, and uh, it has a somewhat of a of a mysterious history, being built by one of the by a very famous uh, German businessman in the area, and he decided to build a castle that was somewhat reminiscent of his homeland, and and so he built this Bavarian type style castle. And uh, which was eventually taken over by uh, uh, a Catholic uh, diocese, and then from from the Catholic diocese, it was uh, taken over by a series of private owners, and and it is currently a hotel in Port Townsend under private ownership. And there are various uh, interesting uh, dynamics to this place. It is supposedly haunted. Supposedly it's haunted, and and, uh, it actually is. I mean, the Kundalini is very clear about that. Um, And, uh, you know, from that that level, we'll be able to to look at the entity phenomena, say, with a little more charity, because typically these types of hauntings are from people that have had a very uh, uh, hurtful, tumultuous uh, passage into death. And, uh, you know, maybe we will be able to give them a little bit of comfort uh, but uh, anyway, I'm going to bring Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez on, and maybe she will be there. Hello, Elizabeth. Are you there? Hi, I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. I'm here. <laughs> Give <laughs> us the information. I had a stray dog in my yard. I was trying to help it go home. <laughs> oh, you're such a sweet girl. <laughs> oh, Yes, so you weren't, um, you weren't at the bathroom, Elizabeth. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, stray dog code for bathroom. <laughs> There's a so, dog right um, there. Yeah, so that's my dog now barking at the stray dog. So anyway, <laughs> but yes, so Kundalini at the castle with Prism seminar and Shakti pot. It'll be Saturday, May 9th, and Sunday, May 10th, from 9 to 6 each day. Uh, we have a special guest, Dharma Sound Kirtan. Um, they're a Kirtan band um, from this area, from Bremerton, Washington, and they'll be coming up and playing um, after the first day of the seminar, and they'll be attending the seminar. Um, and so I guess, Chris, already you mentioned Manresa Castle, and I guess... Um, the registration contact um, then is what's left, which is me, Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez, and you can reach me at area code three six zero seven three two seven zero seven six, and my email is Dalton D A U L T O N G O N Z A L E Z. Gonzalez dot Elizabeth E L I Z A D E T H at gmail dot com. Can you can you give that email again, my dear? It's a little long. Sure. It's Dalton Gonzalez dot Elizabeth at gmail dot com. Oh, very very nice. The, thank you, my dear. And, and from sure. uh, thank you, 
Thank you for having uh, such compassion for the stray dog, too. Thank you very much for that. Sure. Thank you. We, we take care of our fellow mortals here. And I would also like to welcome Ma Deva Sadvi to the, to the chat room, as well as Atlantis Seeker. Hello, hello. And uh, so we all have different journeys that bring us into the Kundalini Inn. And uh, I would like to introduce a person who's had a very, very interesting uh, journey that has brought her uh, all the way from Albania on the uh, the uh, the Balkan Peninsula, uh, all the way over to Mexico, and from Mexico uh, into uh, the United States, and from that part of the United States all the way up uh, into the great state of Michigan. And I would like to introduce to you. Anila, and she's going to tell you a little bit of her story. And Anila, uh, tell me if you if you can tell our audience, you know what what was the dynamic? Uh, why, why did you leave Albania in the first place? Well, my parents wanted to come to America for a better life. Um, the environment there was not safe to raise children, so I came to America with my mother. Um, we went to, we crossed the Mexican border and everything, and we got caught. Oh, so wait a minute. So you, so, uh, we're still on here. What did that happen? Yeah. So, so first of all, why was it, uh, why was it uh, dangerous to raise a family in Albania? Just the way that the government was. It was still a socialist party then. Um, and there wasn't enough money and there wasn't enough just circumstances and opportunities for their, for my mom's children, for me to grow. And they said that the best way would be to go to America. But at that time, it was difficult to just go to America because in order to go to America, you had to win a lottery. Um, so we had to escape. We had to come to America illegally. And we got caught in the Mexican border. So, so how did you? How did you? Uh, I mean, just to to because none of us. No, well, I shouldn't say none of us, but many of us don't have your 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 criminal background. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> many many of us don't know. Uh, you know, why would you? I mean, where, did you did you land in Mexico City, and then what happened? I believe we went to different countries first, and then we landed to Mexico. Um, and then from there, like I said, we got caught, and the police officers gave us the chance to go to America and continue on, you know, with our paperwork and go, you know, have a lawyer and a judge. And actually, it's been almost 18 years, and we finally got our um, our case granted because. Because Sorry, better. guys, the sound, I'm interrupting, the sound has gone. You need to uncover the mic. Oh, boy. Can you hear me now? Is this happening? That's okay. That's okay. Yes, yes, that's okay. I can oh. hear you, Chris. Okay. Just with vanilla, maybe the mic was covered. Oops, sorry. Yes, oh, where was I? Um. So you, you, you made it across the border uh, by Mexico, and you say the Border Patrol caught you? Yep, the Border Patrol caught us, and we were in jail for like three days, and um, they finally gave us the right to proceed to America, um, where we would have a lawyer and a judge. And like I said, it took us almost 18 years to have this case granted, and and we finally got it granted, and now I am... I'm I'm in the process of getting my green card, so I could travel the world. <laughs> wow, wow! It sounds like a very, like quite the adventure, really. Uh, uh and, and so, um, were you at the time? Were you pursuing a, a a Kundalini awakening or activation? At the time, from from when you when you came to the United, how old were you? I was nine years old when I came to America. So, so I would say probably a nine-year-old wouldn't be uh, pursuing a Kundalini awakening consciously, at least maybe unconsciously. Um, 
tell me if you if you may uh what what led you to kundalini in the first place um i was listening to a a public teacher her name is gabriella bernstein go ahead and that's that's how i heard about kundalini and then i was just doing some research on it and i said it would be a great idea if i joined the facebook page and i saw kundalini awakening and I joined, and Chrisom accepted me, and I've been active ever since. Oh, well, well, so we're honored. We're honored to have you here. And I must say that that Anila, you know, she has come to the to the ashram. I picked her up at the airport yesterday after four attempts to to meet up with her there at the airport. It's interesting. She was in the international departure area. Uh, on a domestic flight that was in the arrival area, which is kind of weird, but we finally touched base and I, and I brought her back here and we, and I, we discussed Kundalini the whole way. And we did a little bit of practice with uh, her holiness, Rosemary. And she has awakened with a sore lower back, lower spine with clear indications of Kundalini activation so soon. And I must say that uh, we have, she has been exposed to the Sri Yantra that our that our, our 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 great brother Ed has given to the ashram, and uh, this Sri Yantra really really packs a punch. Uh, when you stare into this Sri Yantra, it comes alive, and something inside you comes alive too, and that something is the Kundalini. Uh, how, throughout your life, uh, 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 Anila, uh, do you remember your dreams? Usually I do not. Like how many times out of ten would you remember your dreams? Oh, maybe two or three. And what happened last night after you were with the Sri Yantra? <laughs> I remembered my dream the next morning. And she had two of them. Both of them pertain to the Kundalini. So it's very cool. Now... Now, have you re- in your in in your journey uh, to the ashram here? Uh, have you had any kind of familial uh, interference or romantic interference that would kind of not want you to to come to a seminar or, or to come to the to the ashram here? Well, yes, my boyfriend he's very hesitant about allowing me to come here. But um, then he came to an agreement that saying to me that he supported me and he wants he wants me to do whatever makes me happy. So, but yes, he has been he was a resistant for me coming here in a in an unfamiliar place. Well, I think that's perfectly understandable. Um, so yeah, yeah, and, and so you you were able to find us on the Facebook uh, group. And uh, do you do you follow the uh, the writings on the Facebook group? I do. So you recognize Fasci and Amelia and and Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez? Yep, and Santera and Eileen. Oh, very good, very good, very good. And I believe Eileen is listening right now. Hello, Eileen. So yeah, so uh, what what do you think your family would think uh, if they knew that you were pursuing Kundalini? Oh, they're right now. They're not happy with me because of my relationship to an older man. But if they found out that I was here, I think they would freak out. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. As so many families would, so many families would. So, well, I just want to say welcome, welcome to the ashram here. And it's been a, you know, the the it's almost twenty four hours now. So it's been a pleasure having you here for a day. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Now, typically, you know, people, people who, family members who see their child or their spouse having a kundalini awakening can be very, 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 uh, as Anila said, resistant to it. Uh, many times they'll call nine one one. Many times they'll they'll want the uh, the person to go to the to the MD, and you know the the person's not feeling bad. They may be feeling different, but they're not always feeling so bad. And uh, and Rosemary, Rosemary's had an interesting uh, conversation with 
with her family and and how has your family's response been to to your kundalini exploration it's been interesting to me and i would say it's not my mother's been gone a number of years but i have five sisters and we're close in that we um I may have mentioned before, we talk once a month uh, on a conference line. We're scattered coast to coast, and the six of us. And then we get together every year and a half or two. And 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 we're what we would consider close and what people would observe that to be. But I'm finding when I've really deeply shared about this work and invited them even to consider it, that that there's... There's something else there. It's not the closeness in the deepest sense. And uh, that happened particularly started something last sept- last August when I, I mailed copies of the Edge interview of Chris. And it's the best that I've heard him speak of, of Kundalini and to the general audience. And I mailed them copies. And two in particular who do a lot of, of this, of a spiritual search work, I had invited them particularly to come to the seminar. And uh, one of them was extremely irate just about it all. It just it just blew me away. I couldn't imagine where in the world she was coming from and harsh and um, critical. And that has created um, just a, a lack of closeness, which really wasn't really close, but we imagined that. So for me, it's um, just being at peace about that and letting people uh, be who they are. And I have I remember Chris saying something in a, a, a parallel conversation about somebody just not being ready yet. And he said it with such compassion in his voice. It really has inspired me in my relationship with my sisters about this and is to have that compassion for them. Um, that's much greater value in my mind and even in my experience of it than being judgmental and hurt and offended and all of that, like that compassion. I, I, I find it's really interesting, Rosemary, yeah, that uh, how you'll find a certain dynamic of individual that – you know, can totally have this. This is they're they're fine with it. They they don't believe it themselves, but mm-hmm. but they're not condemnative about people that are having this, and they're not, uh, as you say, judgmental or hurt or offended. And and yet there's another type of person that just is so offended by this. And and typically it's a person that has their own belief system that perhaps in its fragility it cannot withstand a another viewpoint or another point of view or another uh, level of spiritual uh, investigation or experience. And, and these people can be virulent in their anger and in their passionate uh, response to people that are uh, going through Kundalini. And especially if you look at some of the symbolism with regards to Christians, you know the Christians. You know they 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 don't like serpents so much. They they associate their bad person or their bad spirit that they call the devil. They associate that with a with a serpent and and uh, you know and, and they all they they associate the red apple, you know, which would be the color of the first chakra, the red apple, as being the, the fruit of the tree of knowledge that Eve bit into and of course that opens the gates wide for dominating women and you know uh, you know hurting women blaming women for everything that that's wrong in society because he took that bite out of the apple you know and 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 it just goes on and on and on in in that particular religious uh fold but uh not everybody feels that way and and uh i think the majority of the populations are are, are quite kind as I've traveled across the world and across this nation a few times. I've met more good people than than people that would see say be more challenging towards the Kundalini. I've met some very very nice, very very sweet, understanding, patient, 
and open people that would allow, uh, you know, a kundalini perspective to come forth, whether or not they believe in it themselves, you know, they would they they would at least give you an honest listen and and uh, and go from there. And I've noticed when I when I've gone into uh, Minnesota, the Minnesota people, most of the people that I've met in Minnesota are fairly open minded, and, and uh, you know that. That Midwest hospitality in this country is just, it's a very real thing and uh, and I've had some very positive experiences with the people of Minnesota so I tip my hat to everybody in the Kundalini community in Minnesota Steve and Julia and Joey and and everybody there Andrew and Katrina and everybody that's in the uh, the Kundalini community in the Twin Cities of Minnesota uh, I look forward to to coming back there. I believe in next November, and I would encourage uh, anybody and everybody who is listening to this that is living in the Twin Cities near Mankato, or at least about an hour away from Mankato. There is an exposition being put on there, an expo, and and Steve Schumacher and, and Julia Rainier are going to both be there in person. They will be speaking of their Kundalini experiences. And they will be uh, giving blessings there at the table. And I want to, you know, I want to give a, a real, you know, hearty, beautiful burst of love to them both and to everybody that they are able to touch with their kundalini. So good going, the two of you. Absolutely excellent going. And Rosemary would like to say something. Next Saturday and Sunday. Yes, yes. This is next Saturday and Sunday. And uh, if you'd like any information about this, you can reach Rosemary Goliath at rosemaryg at usinternet.org. Com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Excuse me. I had the O-R-G on my head here. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, uh, my family was fairly benign with it. Um, from some of the stories that uh, Anella's told me about her family, they would be, I think she said freaked out, and I think they would be maybe really, really, really freaked out. Um, yeah. But I've also met other people who, who have had their family respond quite supportively, um, often with spouses, you know, between the two spouses, you know, one's active, one isn't. Sometimes a competition can develop there, who's more spiritual, that type of thing. Uh, but typically that requires a, a level of, of competition that's already existent within the relationship. And, uh, you know, and so you can kind of, kind of take that one out of that out of the mix just by virtue of that um kundalini is is such a rare event that people don't really have reference points for it they can't really place it in any kind of a context within themselves or certainly not within their experience the only real context that we have here in the west that i think is most popular would be kundalini yoga and so they assume that it's some sort of a kundalini yoga branch off when in fact it's what kundalini yoga strives to achieve now, if you have any questions or you'd like to make any comments about your Kundalini awakening experience with regards to breaking the great news to your family, I'll suggest that you call 347-934-0026. Uh, if you're a parent of a Kundalini awakened child or a, a child that is awakening into the grace of Kundalini, please feel free to call in at 347-934-0026. Uh, for the parents of an awakening child, uh, it's, it's really a good idea not to take them to a psychologist, psychiatrist, counselor, or an MD that doesn't understand about kundalini awakening because the very first thing they're going to do is they're going to diagnose them with uh, a schizophrenia and bipolarism and put them on very, very, very strong tranquilizers. And, you know, this isn't pro- probably the best uh, chemical cocktail to feed a child that is in the development stages, you know, uh, just because they're actually seeing entities or they're seeing dead people or they're able to read a person's thoughts or they're able to predict the future, or they're able to breathe underwater, things of that nature, just because it goes against the scientific paradigm, the current scientific paradigm doesn't really mean that the child is crazy or bipolar or schizophrenic or anything like that. It just means that they have skill sets that are different from the norm. And, and, you know, they need to learn more about those skill sets rather than have them dumbed down with chemicals. Now, this is my opinion, and I, I am in no way a medical practitioner in any way, 
shape, or form, and don't take any medical advice from me by virtue of that admittance. However, if it were Lasha, my cat, I would definitely not allow her to be fed any kind of a chemical cocktail that would in any way harm or disadvantage her kundalini awakening uh, just because it doesn't fit into the into the norm or, you know, the, the, the bell curves that the Merck manual puts out. Okay. You know, they, when you, when you work medical, you know, they have, uh, uh, you know, expected developmental results from eight kids at certain ages. So a kid at the age of eight should have a, a skull circumference of such and such, or maybe have a weight matrix, uh, you know, with regards to his, his or her height and, 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 uh, and bone structure, et cetera, you know, of a certain weight. And, you know, the, the kundalini child will, will definitely fall outside of the measuring process when it comes to the measuring of intellect, uh, emotional um, stability, simply because they're getting far more input than most kids are. I believe Julia calls it neural density. And uh, with, with neural density, you know, the kids have a, have far more firing going on in their brain and when you get a lot of uh information into a young brain that way and they're firing so hard into it well it it can it can it can be a little confusing at first and the parents just maybe need to understand that a little better and give the kid a lot more of a chance to just develop through it and uh, let their true brilliance and their true genius come forth as the kundalini makes its way through their system so there is that and uh, so I will, I will invite any of you that are parents of Kundalini children to call in at 347-934-0026. And I'm going to bring Santara on board here. Santara. Listen here I you. am. Yeah, there she is. Hi, hi, hi. Okay, so, so uh, yeah. have, you ever broken, have you ever broken the good news to your family? <laughs> yes, yes, I have. Um, it's interesting, actually, listening there to to Rosemary. I also have that many sisters. I have five sisters. I had I had two separate phases. I think a lot of people have. I had my activation phase, and then which I didn't realize was going on for me. And then in 2007, I had the awakening. And it was after that everything changed. And what was interesting for me was my mom died in 2006. And my mom, you know, I came from a Catholic family and I came from a family that, you know, was very committed to the Catholic faith. And my mom was very much the matriarch and and very much into the dogma and the beliefs and the rules of the Catholic Church. And had my awakening happened, and, you know, even though I was, you know, I'm an older, mature woman, my mom was still very much, um, I suppose we all... She was still very much the boss, you know. So even if I was to do anything, she would um, expect to be told about it and she'd expect feedback. And she certainly would have criticized and have been very critical of what I have come to do since my awakening. So I, I realized very quickly that I think, I'm almost positive, I'm, I'm definite, my Kundalini wasted until my mom was dead. That sounds so bad. <laughs> well, I mean, weren't, weren't, weren't you in actuality rescued from a Magdalene laundry? Isn't, isn't <laughs> that what happened? Not going, no. <laughs> and I'm not going to joke about that. <laughs> so now, end of story there. <laughs> okay. But but no, but my mom, what, no, I mean, on a serious note, I, I mean, even something as simple as going to Brazil that time that I went to Brazil or going to the ashram or having the seminar that I did in 2012, you had no idea of the grief and the stress I would have been put through. And that did not happen because my mom, and it made it much easier for me to communicate then with my sisters. Um, and my dad had a different approach. And therefore... I was able to step out into, um, I suppose, be more public about it, even though it was difficult enough, even so with my, 
you know, Christian Catholic family, it was easier to do that when my mom wasn't there. And that's just a fact. That's just a fact. Um, and I, the interesting thing was when I was away, I had my awakening when I was on a Greek island and I was there with my sister. We went we went a few months after my mom died um, just to have a break and a holiday. And um, that's where it happened. And my sister now, when we look back, we laugh because I was so weird at the time, always wanting to be on my own. I stopped drinking. I didn't have wine with my dinner. I stopped smoking, which, of course, was not like me at all. And um, I was constantly going off on my own, and she just thought I was very strange. But when we look back now, it's actually quite funny. And one of the ways that I was able to, let's say, um, educate them about what had occurred, I used that DVD, that um, documentary, um, the Kundalini Awakening documentary. And that was a great segue into beginning to talk about my experience. And my sisters, in fairness, my sisters, they were quite open to hearing about it. Now, one of them was quite fearful. Um, but since then, I've, I've said this before, Kundalini has been amazing in how it demonstrates its, um, its presence in me to them. Small, simple things occur, and bigger things like healings have occurred for my sister's children and that has been quite dramatic and um, and they know it's kundalini because they know that i can, do can you can you can you describe that i could give a few it's, i can give one example of healing where um my sister had been away we had all been away actually we had gone skiing about two years ago to poland and we came home and we called to we were in her house and her son had been on his own for a while and he's what 17 or 18 and he had a very very sore eye and it was all bloodshot and it was you know weeping and it was very very sore and so she was discussing with him whether you know he needed to go to the doctor so i came and I just said, I can offer Kundalini healing for that if you would like it, David, um, but you need to ask if you if you would. And he said, yes, please. So I sat with him and I just put my hand on his, just over his eye and I went into um, the place of devotion that I go into to the Kundalini and my teacher when I'm giving healing. And I could feel, I can feel the kundalini. The kundalini um, allows me to feel um, the tactile movement of what it does sometimes, or it gives me visions and things. This time, I felt it going right into his eye, and I had some very, very tactile responses myself. But I say nothing. Um, And he said nothing. And then I took my hand away. And he just said, okay, thank you. And he went down to the room, down to the bathroom or whatever. And um, soon after that, he came back up and he told me that he had had sensations on the eye and his eye was completely clear. The bloodshot was gone. The, the running water was gone. The swollen, angry eye was completely gone. It was that dramatic. And... Um, so he was in, like that was the Kundalini giving my sister in particular and her son a demonstration of its loving presence and healing within me and um, to them. And something simple as well that they're given demonstrations of because I have spoken to them about, um, you know, animals and one sister saw a cat respond in a very most unusual way. And when we, my sister's husband is very, very suspicious. He's quite Christian as well and, and is very, very suspicious. But I will still speak about it, not just when, when it comes up. And what has been shown to him have been, um, it's about bees. We've had um, two family occasions uh, one in his house and another barbecue. We've had three actually, where there have been bees, and um, I've just spoken to the bees. I've just said, please leave. You can come back later, and I leave out food. 
for you in the barbecue and the bees literally went away and the most recent one was during the summer in the house where I put out my hand and I said please go if you stay you won't be allowed to live just just leave and the bee literally turned in the opposite direction and left and so my brother-in-law then that you know that is such a dramatic um, demonstration to him that he has to take notice, and so that has opened him to um, be more accepting of the fact that Kundalini is real and that it's not something to be feared, and that it is of the divine, and it allows me then as well then when we speak about it to be able to speak in those ways, and he listens. Um, and I, there's lots of demonstrations like that with my family. I could, I could, I could fill a book actually um, about how the how the Kundalini has been that way with my family. I knew you were going to do that. I just knew it. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 I just want to say to Anila, if I may, that when Chris and you and to everybody, Chris and says Amelia is coming to Washington, and nobody, a lot of people don't know Santara is Amelia. You know, so yeah, I just want to say that. Well, thank you, uh, Santara Amelia, Santara Amelia. Kundalini. <laughs> Kundalini, appreciate uh, clearing up that for you. Okay, so so yeah, so yes, it takes it, it takes quite a bit of family adjustment for for Kundalini children to be able to come forward uh, with this. Uh, I know of a Kundalini mother, uh, and and you'll see her on the videos that I have on the YouTube network. Um, Kundalini mother talks about what it's like to raise a child. Or to have to see your child who's 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 just come back, say from uh, the army or from some sort of a organized governmental organization, kind of uh, shell shocked into a Kundalini awakening, perhaps after a tour in Iran or Iraq, and and is uh, having Kundalini phenomena, and the you know, and the 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 treatment for that person is really being you know, drugged into stupefaction to some degree. And then when the drugs are discontinued and titrated down and then discontinued, then uh, the, how the person opens up and you know, how they come into this level of superhuman strength and, and uh, you know, super capabilities in so many different areas of life. And, and I will encourage everyone uh, to go into that uh, YouTube uh, channel there, chrism.kundalini, K-U-N-D-A-L-I-N-I, and, and watch that video, especially for those of you that have children or you have, say your, your kundalini is awakened and you have little kids around you, and what do you think is going to happen with them? There is a potential for awakening to happen to your children if you yourself are awakened. So consider that and... Um, I'm sure there are other people here that are listening right now that have that that have or know of kids that are, you know, from awakened parents. Say some of the folks that followed Osho or Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh, and you know, some of these folks awakened their Kundalini too, because because Osho, you know, whatever his other issues may have been, you know, he was able to put out some some fairly clarifying uh, information about about uh enlightenment and, and maybe correct behavioral modes of of uh of having the kundalini and what you might need in order to get the kundalini and what behaviors you may want to adopt with regards to that and i see my deva sadvi is typing away fingers are on fire because i believe she was part of that uh that movement there in that city in oregon that became rajnishapuram so yeah, so welcome to see which what you're uh, going to be typing. There she is. Hello, Madeva Sabi. For those of you that are on the uh, chat group, she's saying hello. And uh, yeah, you know, a lot of people that practice uh, a lot of meditation, a lot of yoga, and then you start coupling that with some some fairly strong information with regard to. Uh, uh, 
you know, the Kundalini or altered state, shall we say, uh, that that can that can bleed right on over to the kids. And and uh, Madhava Savi says, yes, it's true. I was in the ashram in India. So she didn't get to ride in a Rolls Royce, which, you know, I just want to say <laughs> it's, it's no big deal. They're, all cars are just four, four rubber tires that hold you up over the road, you know, with different uh, motors or, or engines. So anyway, yeah, 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 this is very, very, uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting thing for families to enter into the dynamic of Kundalini and, and how they can be resistant and how they can be accepting. Uh, for instance, the woman who was watching her son come back from, from war with Kundalini Awakening and then, you know, see him getting dubbed down by drugs and then to see him awaken you know, once the drugs are stopped and, and to see these abilities come to him and and uh, as as he works through the karma and he works through the different levels of karma that 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 were incurred, uh, you know, by virtue of the, the you know, the military service. Uh, it's very, very interesting. And I welcome any veterans who may be listening to this program to call in 347-934-0026. And and I know a, a, a few veterans, uh, as of late, especially, have been calling me up or emailing me and letting me know, uh, you know, that they too have had the Kundalini awakening experience. They didn't seek it, you know, but sometimes the trauma of war, and sometimes uh, it's just time for that individual, and they may be some military specialist, and you know, they they'll have the Kundalini, and they'll have to try to place it into a, a proper context. For them, say within the military environment, and so that's always an interesting thing. And so, if there are uh, uh, veterans who who have had the Kundalini or having the Kundalini right now, maybe you're having a problem with it. Maybe you you might like some advice with it. Well, the first things I'm going to tell you to do, I would like to tell you to go to Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one. So that's Kundalini Awakening Systems one. Dot com and, and look at the uh, menu on the left side column. It's the fifth option down. They're called the Kundalini Awakening Safeties. And I would like you to really begin to explore those uh, protocols for stability and balance within the Kundalini Awakening format. So so we have that now. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, and we have... <laughs> yeah... Yeah, my Devasavi says no, no, she didn't get to ride in a in a Rolls Royce, and and uh, and uh, looks like uh, Amelia is welcoming welcoming Manisha to see you here an hour earlier than the usual time. So yeah, so everybody, the clocks have changed in the United States. Uh, as fast she may tell you, Elizabeth may tell you, M J Henderson may tell you. The clocks have changed in the United States. I think Europe is going to be another uh, week and a half or two, two weeks down the road. Um, <clears throat> so if you have any questions about your Kundalini awakening uh, phenomena or equation, call 347-934-0026. Now I'm going to abruptly change the subject. The abrupt change of subject has to do with the power of the Om. A lot of people are wondering, oh my gosh, what kind of a what kind of a meditation should I do for Kundalini Awakening? And I'll tell you one thing that you can do is that right there. You can say A-U-M or O-M. Either way you go, this is going to prove a great motivator for awakening the Kundalini within you. And if, make sure that you're even on both ends of it, that the beginning of the Om is as long as the ending, the humming part of the Om or the M. Mm, Make sure you do the humming part of the OM because that's what's going to stimulate your sixth chakra. <coughs> Another way, this is th these are some of the questions I think uh, that have been coming up, and uh, let me have Santara. Yes, I think Santara has gone off to the air So, yes. so Santara, uh, were you able to take? Uh, 
uh, any questions off of the group? I have some questions, Susan, yeah. Will I ask you them? Oh, you you were able to get some questions? Yes, I had some since last week. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, go ahead and, and ask them. Then. I, I thought some of them were pertaining to meditation. And, well, uh, I, first, didn't, I didn't. Yes, I let, didn't let me, take let, anything. Let me go ahead and, and, and stay stay online, though. Stay in the red here. Uh, one of the meditation techniques, of course, is the OM, as I just said. Another meditation is just to follow your breathing. You know, feel what it is to breathe in and expand and feel what it is to to exhale and 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 feel the expansion give in and, and just follow that. As simple as that may sound, it's like, oh, my gosh, I've been breathing since I've been alive in this world. But, yeah, but just do it now with the attention on the breath and feeling the breath and allowing the breath to speak to you in a way of, of mindfulness and, and attention, and you might be very, very pleasantly surprised at what the Kundalini does through your watching and, and being mindful of the breath. So those two meditations, just for the virtue of this show, is what I'm going to right now. Go ahead, Santara. Well, there was a question about breathing through the nose or the mouth chrism. So would the breath be in and out through the nose? Well, if your nasal passages are clear, you know you don't have a lot of mucus or, or snot, you know, clogging up your nasal passages. Uh, it is best to inhale and exhale through the nose as much as possible. Okay, but you know sometimes people have allergies or whatever, or cold or flu, and they can't do it that way. And so, if you purse your lips as if you're whistling, so if anybody that can whistle, you just go. When you purse your lips that way, bringing your lips uh, to a very, very small opening, and breathe your air in in a controlled fashion that way, that can help a person if they are, you know, if the nose is, shall we say, otherwise occupied. And, uh, and you know, that would be the only part, that would be the only, uh, you know, mouth breathing that I would recommend. Unless okay, you're thank you. Unless you're swimming. Okay. Right? You know, it's different. Of course. There's a question about the arm. When doing an arm meditation several separate times, I felt and heard a rushing of wind and an expansion and depth of my left inner cranium side. It surprised me and stopped the meditation. Any ideas of this wind and expansion? I think you've all of a sudden muffled your microphone. Could you repeat the question, please? Ah, I picked up my iPad. Okay, one second. Is that okay, Nam? Yeah, go ahead and talk a little louder. Okay. But yeah, yeah. Okay. When doing an Aum meditation, several times I felt and heard a rushing of wind and an expansion and depth on my left inner cranium side. It surprised me and stopped the meditation. Um, any ideas of this wind and expansion, what it is? Thank you. Well, the, the, Thank you, Amelia. The wind is typically the, the Shakti Kundalini making her presence known. Uh, many times a person will feel that, that breeze, a, kind of like a cool breeze, blowing into their face or blowing into their third eye or their sixth chakra or blowing on their forehead or, or blowing, as, you, as, she, as she mentioned, inside the the area of the left cranium. And this is the Shakti Kundalini letting you know that she is there. And for a person to just start the Aum meditation and to have this happen, well, that will be a big surprise because, wow, I didn't have to do too much, and here I, do, here I have a Kundalini response. Well, you, you know, this is your time to have this. This is a person that has that kind of response so quickly. Well, they can, they can pretty much discern that, that this is their time to have this, and it is a it is a viable opportunity for them to continue that oming meditation or to continue any other kind of meditation, and the kundalini will begin to develop phenomena that will help them to continue uh, those those types of meditations. Don't let the surprise of the phenomena uh, cave in your your practice. Continue with the alming. Continue with the breathing. Continue with the meditation. Uh, if you're doing yoga and you start feeling this happen to you when you're doing the yoga, I know Anila, you know, she's a yoga instructor. She, and she does a lot of hot yoga. and She does a, 
uh, vinyasa yoga, things of that nature too. And, and this can also occur during a yoga session. So just to be clear about this, this is the sacred feminine making her presence known to the individual that is having it. And uh, don't be afraid. Don't stop. Keep going. It's a good thing. Thank you, Kusum. Is The next question, is there any way to awaken the kundalini without meditating? Even if it's dangerous, I would assume the risks. Oh, no, no, no. I know who this is. No, absolutely not. I will not give away information to the this I, this person actually I actually is representing a a military group. It, it, it appears if you if you if you do a little more research into this person, they, this person represents a military group that wants to learn how to awaken the Kundalini without meditation. Uh, you know, and there there are various ways to do this, but I will not discuss it here uh, on this program, in this platform, or on the group, because, you know, they're not coming at it. My Kundalini says don't tell them anything. And so I'm just going to, I'm going to practice what I preach. I'm going to pay attention to the Kundalini, and uh, they will not get anything from me, unless it's one thing, and that's practicing the safeties. Be forgiving, be kind, be loving, be gentle, be service-oriented without expectation of return. You can you can activate the kundalini that way, and that's not such a hard meditation. Next Thank one. You, Thank you. Um, okay. Um, I'm just choosing here. Okay, last night I had a nightmare, even though I wasn't asleep. Suddenly, someone caught my neck strongly. I wanted to cry out, and I can't. Um, I wanted to voice, and it won't come out. I wanted to get up, and I can't. Why did this happen to me? And after I slept, it happened again and again. Well, you've been bad. You you were not naughty, or I mean, you were naughty, not nice. And so Santa Claus sent one of his elves over. To, to torture you uh, outside of Christmas time. What do you think, Amelia? Mm, I think you should expand on that somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> Is it sleep paralysis? Is that what's being described? No, no, or? no, no, no. Say it again. Okay. Say it again. Last night I had a nightmare, even though I wasn't asleep. Some, suddenly someone catched my neck strongly. I wanted to cry and I can't. I wanted to voice and it can't come out. I wanted to get up, I can't. Why did this happen to me? Then after oh, I slept, okay. it happened again and again. There's a certain level of terror that freezes a person up, and this is, this is that terror. Um, when when you, you, you know, if you step out in front of a car and you freeze, you know that's the you know that's that that happens to many mammals. They just there's that microsecond that they freeze. Well, in this case, the terror is far more prolonged, and uh, and I've also had this occur uh, when I've had certain levels of nasty entity come up behind me, and and I at the time wasn't real cogent about what was occurring, and that, and that nasty entity comes up, and you're just terrorized for a. For a, a number of minutes, and this can seem like sleep paralysis. It has the same uh, level of effect upon the body like sleep paralysis does, but this is not sleep paralysis. It just seems that way, and this is this is terror paralysis. And that entity, there was a discarnate entity there that was grabbing her around the neck, and doing so repeatedly in order to terrorize her. Now, why did that happen? Well, you know, I mean, we'd have to get into what the nightmare was all about, which she doesn't really explain. Uh, you know, what was happening in the dream? Why was what was happening in the dream happening? I mean, what level of karmic influence is there? Is she still burning karma? Well, obviously she is. Uh, you know, if she chose not to be terrorized by this by this entity, uh, what would have happened then? You know, how would she have been able to fend it off or to get it to go away? Typically, uh, you can fight back with entities. You are not, you are not a victim to entities. You can fight them back. I remember uh, 
one of the entities I had, actually, I've done it more than a few times now, but I'll give you one. I had a black gaseous pyramid lower itself over my midsection. And I popped up, popped away just to see it landing there. And I jerked myself forward, and, and it was this was it was like black smoke. And I was waving my hand through it, telling it to get out, shouting at it, get off of me, get out of my, you have no right to do this, blah blah blah, you know. And I'm waving my hands through it, <coughs> hitting it and slapping it, and and basically displacing some of that smoke. And it moved off, moved off about ten feet. And then it stopped, and it was just, it seemed like it was just there trying to figure me out. And and I thought, wow, cool, I won. And as soon as I thought that, it attacked me again. It came right back to me again, and I I started waving my hands and yelling at it. And, oh, my gosh, you know, and it finally moved off and and moved away as soon as I put on uh, certain kinds of Tibetan chanting. I grabbed that cassette. It was cassette back then. I grabbed the cassette, I put it in the player, and I put the Tibetan chanting on, and boom, it left and never came back. Okay. But I fought it. I fought, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just told you, I was going to say, you know, you teach to ignore entities, you know, to not engage with them, to form no contract of attachment, but you also teach to to do as you're doing there. How does one discern um well, well, I mean, it's fairly, fairly easy if they're, like, Obvious. sitting on your head. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. If they're sitting across your genitals, you know, I'm not going to say, oh, yeah. well, I'll just ignore them, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, and yeah. at that time, at that time, I didn't know about the power of of ignoring them, okay. That was earlier on in my process, and all I knew is I was being attacked by something I couldn't figure out, but... It had resonance with the many, many different forms of, of entity that, that I had been exposed to since I was a little kid. And so mm-hmm. I wasn't about to let that thing sit on my, you know, genitals. And I was just not about to let that thing even touch one hair on my body. It was that disgusting. Oily yeah. black smoke in the shape of a pyramid. No, thank you. And... Uh, so, yeah, is another I, I, response. It is another response to going to devotion. Well, if I had I known mean, about devotion, I, yes, 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 I, absolutely. I know, I know. I'm not. I'm not being critical. <laughs> well, if I well, no, really, if, if, if I had known about devotion, I'd have gone there in a heartbeat. Let me tell you what. If I had known about the power of devotion, it would never have come in the first place. Or at least mm. it never would have come that close to me. Mm. Devotion forms kind of like a a, a strong barrier uh, against because the devotion is an action of love, and an action of love is is a frequency of almost like material love that that comes from devotion. And when you when you, you when your kundalini connects to that, it's like a wall of love, and and it. It prohibits a lot of entities from having any kind of an ability to attach to you mm. that way. And uh, and so, you know, I didn't know about it then, so I was waving my hands through it, yelling at it. And, and something in me, and I'm going to say it was the Kundalini, something in me told me to put a very specific cassette of Tibetan chanting into the player and play it. And once I did that, I never saw that thing again. I saw other things, you know, the incubi, the succubi, and I also had physical encounters with them, i.e., I told them four times not to bug me that way, you know, not to try to, you know, you know, suck out my sexual, you know, power. And they kept coming back, and one, the last time they did it, I got so pissy at them that I slammed my head back into the pillow because it was usually early in the morning that they would – that, that the attack would come and I slammed my head back into my pillow and I intentionally astral projected right to where they were and I and I created a big stick and I just wailed on one of them you know you know you know I was I was very very clear about my displeasure about them visiting me this way 
And then I saw the female, and, you know, my, my programming kicked in that, oh, you don't hit girls, right? And so so I didn't hit her, but I looked into her greasy, uh, you know, just really disgusting. I mean, really, I can't tell you how absolutely disgusting some of these creatures are. Uh, just amazing levels of, well, just not my type, I guess. Is what, uh, that's, <laughs> anyway. I told her never to return. And uh, they may have tried a, a few times after that, but I wasn't real conscious of it, so I couldn't say one way or the other. But but uh, you can go in and you can get them. You are not a victim. If you don't have the power of devotion like like uh, Rosemary does and like Anila is developing and like Julia cert- certainly does, if you don't have that, uh, not, it's not an ability, it's a... If you don't have that comfort level or that trust to be able to be devotional, uh, then you're not going to be able to build out that 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 mechanism that kind of has entities just kind of wash off you like like water from a from a duck's back. You know, they, mm-hmm. if you ever seen what on earth is that? What are you doing, Amelia? I'm not doing anything. You're doing something. I'm not. You moving your hands at all? I sit here, you I sit here in absolute stillness when we're when we're speaking. Or when you're oh, speaking. Okay, well I heard some sort of a scratching. Anyway, um yeah, if you ever seen water roll off a duck's back, that is very similar to to how a devotional wall uh can repel uh entities and any entities. A lot of the entities, I'll have you know, they look like orcs. If you've ever if you've ever seen any of the J.R. Tolkien uh movies like The Lord of the Rings or or The uh Return of the King or The Two Towers, that type of stuff. If you look at those movies, certainly some of them will look like the mountain goblins, I think they were called. And then you have the Urukai orcs of Saruman. And then you have the you know the whole messy orc crowd of uh, of the Return of the King. They look like that. They try to. They look like that. I don't know who did the artwork, but somebody was really plugged in. To what's going on? <laughs> a lot of them. A lot yeah. of them. <coughs> a lot of them are just gaseous in nature too. Have you ever seen the television series called Supernatural? A tale of two brothers uh, that are demon killers or something like that, and what they do with the uh, what what the makers of the show do with with the the entities there, they just turn into a really black smoke, and that is so so very close to being accurate. It's it's kind of interesting to to, to wonder about some of these people that do this work, and 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 mm-hmm. you know what they're you know where 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 they get their ideas yeah it's very very close and uh and some of them you know some of the little people are real the little people you know they'll come up to you and they'll you know typically they're not the nicest folk uh even if you're in a nice place like a hospital i've seen them uh there it's a real thing and uh you know like what is that Betty Eady, I think her name was. She's she wrote the first Saved by the Light book, and you know she had the near death experience and blah blah blah. And she woke up in the hospital and she could see these three little entities about eight inches tall, very you know various degrees of ugliness and anger and and uh, you know not the most pleasant uh, feeling critters, uh, you know and and. and you know, she didn't know about devotion either, and they just kind of walked away, I guess, from her. But, but uh, not everybody's so lucky. These entities will come up, and they will try to bug you. They will try to corrupt you. They will try to corrupt you any way they can. And typically, what you'll see them do, and and uh, Julia has seen this lately. Typically, oh, Julia's here. Julia, maybe you ought to call in, Julia, since we're on this subject. Go ahead and grab that beautiful iPhone of yours and call right on in, and uh, let's hear it from your perspective as well. Uh, You know, 
they go for the spine. They go for the they, they go for the point uh, where the the cervical collar uh, connects to the skull. Mm-hmm. You know, they like to wrap themselves around that fifth chakra area there. Sometimes, certainly the sexual areas as well. They like to wrap themselves around that area too. So. Uh, you know, a wall of devotion will fend these things off pretty well. Not only will it fend them off, it will clean them out of you. The more devotional and love-based you can become, the greater your level of cleanliness and, and uh, you know, that you can have from being infected by these entities. As, you know, I, I tell... Any of my female students, you know, they got a husband or a boyfriend, you know, is like, say they're, you know, addicted to alcohol or they're addicted to methamphetamine or they're addicted to marijuana. They're addicted to some substance that opens themselves up to entity interaction. Uh, You know, it's it can be really, really disconcerting to see what is coming through that person's face as you make love with them. You know, as you kiss them, what is it that is sharing the physical form of your husband or your boyfriend or your brother, your father, your girlfriend, your wife? I mean, what is it, what is it that's sharing the body with this person? Okay. It's very interesting to, to not, to all these years, you know, I... I really hesitated to say anything about this because, geez, you know, I don't want to scare people. It's not the idea is not to scare people, but but since uh, Julia kind of started breaking breaking the ice on this, you know, I felt well, okay, maybe it's time, maybe it's time to have this occur. And uh, yeah, yeah, they're all over the place. You're not gonna you're not gonna hide from from the lower denizens of the lower astral that are inter interspersed within the uh the physical and this is truth i guess julia is not going to call in that's so that's okay too mm-hmm. uh but, one of the uh, things with devotion too is that it's because it's love and fear fear isn't there because when you're in devotion it's not possible to be fearful it's just not oh, i see it Deva, De- Ma Deva Sadhvi is asking, can one use an item that a teacher has given to the student to help protect them? Possibly. You're talking more along the line of a talisman or, or say, a blessed object. If, you're, if your uh, belief in that is strong enough and your devotion to that teacher is strong enough, then I think it could help. Um I can only come in to the to this from uh, you know like I I do bl- I bless objects you know and I was telling Fashi just the other day how uh, you know to how you, you you're given the ability to see into into the molecular structure and then the energy you can see the Kundalini conscious consciousness uh, infiltrate the entire molecular structure and that that object is now blessed. Um, so I'd have to say, yeah, I think it can work. I just don't, I don't make talismans to keep people free of entities. Um, I prefer that they not use a talisman. I prefer that they use devotion because devotion is so much stronger and it comes from the heart of the individual. So you're not relying on something that is external to you. You're not relying on a, you know, a cross or a, special blessed belt buckle or, you know, like Sinbad, the sailor. Uh, so so I, I think it's interesting to to really, oh, Julia is here. Oh, great, great, great. So, yeah, so I think it's far better to go from within rather than depending on something outside of yourself. But, of course, you know, if the teacher's kundalini has gone into that bottle or that, that whatever it is, the kundalini is the kundalini now, is the kundalini going to provide a a uh, a form of protection uh well the, you know where is your devotion in relation to the kundalini are you just using the kundalini as a 
as a as a as a as like you know a uh, uh, mosquito repellent? Is it going to allow you to use itself that way? Like oh. Gosh, there's all these entities around here. Let me spray my Kundalini repellent on, on it so I, I can just repel all these entities. Well, I don't think so. I don't think that's going to be allowed. Okay, I think that the, the Kundalini is as much a teacher as it is a, a, a mother, father, protector. So it will teach you how to protect yourself. And one of the ways that it's been teaching people is through devotion. And I'm going to bring Julia on. She's She's uh, decided to call in, and I want to say thank you, dear Julia, for calling in, my dear. How are Hi, you? Hi, Chris. I'm really well. Thank you. How are you? And I just, I, I just want, oh, very well. Thank you. I just want to remind everybody that Julia, Her Holiness, and Steve Schumacher will be at the Man Kati. What is it? Man Kato. The Man Kato Exposition. This will be this weekend, Saturday, Sunday, in the beautiful Minnesota town of Mankato. That's M-A-N-K-A-T-O. And there you'll be able to see Julia in person. She will be speaking, as will uh, Steve Schumacher be speaking. They'll be speaking about their own uh, uh, amazing kundalini experiences, and they'll be giving blessings at the table. So, So thank you for calling in, my dear. Oh, you're very welcome. My pleasure. Now tell me, uh, when you're encountering an entity that has infested an individual, uh, what do you typically see? It really depends. You know, sometimes I will see, um, actually most frequently, I will see dark orbs around a person, and I'll see that actually with my physical eyes. Um, So it'll be a dark flash, sometimes coming out of their head or sometimes to the left or right, um, usually near their shoulders. Um, and sometimes I'll see other colored lights around them as well. And so then I will look closer, and I'll start looking with my third eye, and I will often see um, a dark entity close to where I saw that flash. So often there'll be a dark thing on crouched on a person's shoulder kind of digging in to the back of their neck. That's right, what I see most right frequently. At the, at, right at the occiput, right? Right. But I'll see them on the shoulder from the front, but they're reaching around to the back and kind of digging right, in. Digging right, right. And do you see them as a multiped? A multiped? <laughs> you mean many arms, <laughs> arms and legs? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes they look like a little gremlin kind of creature. More often, more sort of dark and furry, and um, you know, small and yeah, or bat-like. Yeah, I've seen them. I've seen them with uh, uh, tentacles in the nose, tentacles in the person's eyes, their mouth. Their umbilicus, the genital areas, the rectum, anywhere where there's a, a you know an obvious uh, 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 access point to the inside of the body, uh, I've seen them try to connect to. Um, and tell me about this 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 devotion that I've been talking about. How does that work for you? Okay, well, um, I've missed quite a bit of the the previous conversation, so forgive me if I'm repeating anything that you've already said. Um, But what I learned from our experience in Sedona um, back in January was that, you know, it's it's actually pretty simple. There's not a lot that you need to do to protect yourself from these entities or to remain free from their infestation. You just need to follow your teacher's instruction and go into that devotion and be really, really sincere about it and understand that, you know, you, you don't want to waver because you can be very vulnerable. These things are interested in attacking you and, and using your energy and things like that. So you just go straight in and you don't hesitate and you really, really mean it. And you just you visualize, you connect with every part of your being, your emotions, your mind, your physical body, whatever you can do to make that connection strong. And it works. And have confidence in it. Trust it. Trust it. Yes, yeah. absolutely yeah. trust it with your life. And would you, would, you, would you say they look like orcs? Oh, yeah. Fuzzy orcs. I mean, they... they I don't know if this is Kundalini or if this is the the entities, how they can change their appearance. Um, But, yeah, often they're really ugly and dank and furry and dark. 
And um, But it depends because the entities I've seen in bars, they look more humanoid and they look like these tall, thin, very sad creatures. Um, so it really depends. Sometimes they look like little furry animals, like the one I saw at Yosemite. Um, sometimes they look like little monkeys, bat monkeys. <laughs> it just bat depends on, on... Bat? Did yeah. you say bat monkey? Yeah, bat monkey. I don't know. <laughs> bad monkey. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so have you had the experience of, of uh being up close and personal with a person that's being infested with entities like like maybe when we were watching Jesus being channeled? What was that like? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. there were quite a few people in that scenario who had um, entity infestation. And, um, you know, often I'll feel it in my body, a kind of tingling, a sort of warning sensation when someone's talking. And I'll start to see the flashes around them. And then you see them, the entity often communicating through that person's face, through their eyes. Sometimes their pupils will get really constricted and narrow, and you'll just see that intensity in their eyes, and you just know that that's the entity talking through them. Mm-hmm. So I saw that a few times. And then, you know, with the main speaker at that particular event that you just mentioned, you know, then I saw the entity coming out of that person's head and coming into the center of the circle and, and working its its thing, doing its thing from there. Right. Now, now uh, Jesus wasn't being channeled. I don't want anybody to uh, to to misunderstand, but they were, you know, touting it as Jesus being channeled and and uh when in fact it was it was all entities being channeled just just discarnate entities and they will just lie they they will just lie they will corrupt in 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 pretty much any way they can and they actually serve a really good purpose I don't know if Julia you would agree with this but they serve a good purpose in keeping you to your moral fortitude to your moral compass they they keep you positioned appropriately, at least within a Kundalini context, with your ethical values, the values that the Kundalini appreciates within an awakening context. Have you felt that? Yeah, absolutely. But I think, I mean, it's it's sort of sad because I think sometimes it can take a long time for a person to realize what's happening. Because with the person that you just mentioned, there was a thought form of a Jesus-like figure above his head. It looked like one of those um, ancient Coptic and Caustic um, funerary paintings of a, of a man that looked a bit like Jesus. And that was what I saw at first. So I think he truly believed this was Jesus. But then out of that came that really misty gray form. So it's sort of sad. I mean, and they were all focusing on love and positive things, and yet they were being manipulated. So I think there needs to, you know, people need to go through a process where they develop greater awareness to what's really happening so they can really see what's happening. And I think if they have any negative qualities like pride or greed or desire to impress or that kind of thing, that can kind of insert itself and and be a barrier to their ability to see what's really happening. So it can be a long process for people, I think. Well said, my dear. Well said. And, and, uh, And how have you been doing lately? (laughs) <laughs> oh, I've had some interesting struggles this week, but it's been amazing, you know. Um, you're quite an amazing teacher, and I'm so grateful, you know, that well, you... Well, I, I hear the clarity in your voice, my dear, and, and you know, a teacher is only as good as the student that is that is, that is is taking in that information, and so I just want to say uh, you're doing great, and I really want to honor you, and I want to honor the sincerity and the level of awareness that you're achieving with your Kundalini Awakening uh, experience and so nice, nice going, Julia. Nice going. Well, well, thank you to you and to your Kundalini and your wonderful guidance. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for calling in. Oh, you're very welcome. My pleasure. And, and still, feel free to stay on the line, okay? Okay. And so, yeah, there you have it. Now, you know, as as Am- Amelia, uh, excuse me, Santara Kundalini said. That, that yeah indeed um, I do teach devotion now and I do also teach people to just ignore them. The less attention you pay them, the less opportunity they have to corrupt you. Uh, but some of them can be very insistent, especially if you have a karmic uh, 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 scenario that that 
allows them greater access to you well you know that can lead to that greater access can lead to greater levels of of a, of a corrupting force tr- trying to insert its will into your uh, behaviors and so be very 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 astute and aware like julia is be very very astute and aware at at how where where you know are you thinking of really bad ideas all of a sudden are you just like thinking about committing suicide or committing hurt on another person you know for no reason at all i mean what what's going on with you and and how can you keep yourself free of such uh, infestation, and that's basically the role of, of of you. That's what you are supposed to do. And one way to do that is to follow Julia's example. She gives extreme devotion to the Kundalini. She gives extreme devotion, and and you know she's had the you know she's been where the where the rubber meets the road with this. You know, literally the parking lot of an ex motel six i mean hey you know <laughs> if you want entities that's the place <laughs> and uh, you know no less you know in sedona so so you know she's she's had a very very strong experience with this and uh and she has been able to figure her way through it with devotion with devotion and so i, I would invite anybody who is working in these areas to uh, to find a level of devotion that they can have and they can hold. Um, for me, I you know the private students that 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 are learning about the Kundalini from me, it's the devotion that I'll counsel them to do with regards to keeping themselves free of entity infestation. Next question, there, my dear Santara. Next question. Prism, you often speak about the five bodies of expression. Where does the astral body fit into the five bodies? Gosh, I talk about the, the, the five bodies of, of the human expression. That, so we're basically talking about the mental body, the physical body, the psychological body, the emotional body, and the spiritual body. So the spiritual body and the astral body would have a, a similar valence. Okay. Yeah. Is it possible to activate Kundalini in the astral plane during out of body experiences? Well, you got to understand. I mean, Kundalini is a very physical force. It's not, uh, you know, airy fairy astral, you know, astral Mary and astral Paul. You know, it's 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 a very very physical force, and in many ways, you know, once your kundalini is activated, you'll be grounded. You won't be able to astral project. So, I'm not going to say it's impossible. You know how I feel about absolutism, but I'll say it's not likely. You know, anything is possible, but I'm not I'm not going to give it a a strong level of probability of activating a physical based kundalini consciousness while one is in the astral state no no not at all uh but you know i mean like i say anything is possible and uh i suppose uh you know that is just another of the possible probabilities that that you know may may not be so feasible now what what else can happen is you can be infested with an entity in the astral state, and that at, that entity can be making you think that you're activating your kundalini, and so you may want to really look to see what you're doing in the astral state and what you're attracting, and why uh, you might want to think that you're being activated by the kund, you know, with the kundalini in, in in the astral state. But once again, I won't say that it's impossible. Okay, thank you. Um. Does solar eclipse have any effect on the kundalini? Well, a lot of people are going to say, oh, the full moon affects my kundalini this way, and a lunar eclipse affects my kundalini this way, and oh, my God, did you feel the solar eclipse and how it affected my kundalini that way? So I suppose if a person, you know, is looking to be so amazingly sensitive that, 
that yes, the, 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 the solar or the lunar eclipses will affect them in a certain way. And then, you know, you'll have the blue star Kachina asteroid that goes by or Halley's Comet goes by and, oh, my Kundalini's going crazy. You know, no, um, it doesn't affect mine, let's put it that way. The, the moon and the sun, the, 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 the solar and the lunar, to me, they represent aspects of the Kundalini. Um, does it represent an awakened Kundalini when the moon and the sun come together in those types of ways? Uh, no, not to me. Uh, but then again, yeah, everybody's different. Everybody has a different reason for saying the things that they say. But within within my Kundalini awakening, uh, the sun can do what it needs to do. The, the moon will do what it needs to do. The asteroids will do what they need to do. And the stars and the galaxies will do what they need to do. Uh, it's not so much a conduit of activation or or tactility uh, for the Kundalini per se, because I mean, you know, if you were to, if you were to say that that oh gosh, the lunar eclipse or the solar eclipse does this to my Kundalini, well then, you know, think of because you're at one with everything with Kundalini, so. You're at one with all the planets and all the stars, all over the place, all over the multidimensional multiverse. So in that sense, I mean, how could you, I mean, (laughs) you're not just part of the terrestrial system. You're one of a quadrillion and more systems. And there, and you know, and sometimes those planets are, or, you know, the, the, those lunar bodies are passing in front of that sun anywhere in the universe. And so, you know, you'd, you'd be constantly affected. You know, Kundalini isn't just about terrestrial life forms. It's not a, just about that. It's all over the place. It presents every level of physical formation, every level of celestial formation, every level of planetary alignment everywhere outside of the solar system included so you know for me and mine no absolutely not i accept it as 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 much of an effector on my kundalini as as a person lifting a finger and pushing a star okay mm. Okay, thank you. What, um, let me see, does Kundalini make one sleepy at times? Sleepy? Yeah. (laughs) What do you mean? No. (laughs) I I got the two students right here. They're fast asleep. I I, I think my voice (laughs) is <laughs> yes, the person goes on. I think, I think I have the, yeah. I think I have the sonorous quality. <laughs> it's time to go to sleep. Chris, I'm talking. Um, yeah, Kundalini will definitely make you go to sleep. Definitely make you go to sleep. Sometimes it'll be a quick cat nap. Sometimes it'll be 14 hours straight. Kundalini will put you to sleep so that it can do its work on you and. And it, you know, when you are asleep, your ego is no longer in control. And the kundalini can do what it needs to do to the body without your ego getting in the way. So if you find yourself all of a sudden sudden narcoleptic, well, there's a good reason for that within a kundalini context. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, yes, yes, yes. That makes, I see. Okay. Um... What is the difference between Kundalini awakening and Pranotana, if I'm pronouncing that correctly? Pranapana is just another word for activation. It's the activation sequence that uh, that starts from uh, the 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 inner urge uh, to to seek out spiritual material, to begin to look for a teacher, to 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 find it, and I'm going to bring Julia on board here again. Uh, Julia, hello. Hello. Can yeah, you, hear you me? remember that? You remember that urge that you had when you were when you were exploring different uh, uh, spiritual understandings, different 
levels of spiritual grace and you just you were looking for teachers or you were looking for books, you were looking for any kind of information, right? Oh, absolutely. It was almost like obsessive compulsive. Yeah, constantly for years and years. Yeah. Exactly. That's the activation. That's the kundalini coming in and guiding a person's hands to reach for a certain book, even to the point of knocking a certain book off the shelf because they're just so clueless about what it is, uh, you know, the kundalini wants them to read. And, and, you know, if you look at your scenario, Julia, you know, you were really taken to some very specific places with this, right? Absolutely, yeah. And uh, it led you into to, it led you into mystical Christianity, did it not? It did, but you know, I also I was so intensely into the Christianity that I was asked to be a Sunday school teacher. I was so intensely into the Buddhism that my Lama was asking me to teach. I mean, it, it's not just a passive interest; it's very active, and you're just trying to find everything you can, you know, that's that's of use that you can use. Exactly, exactly, and this. This would be the you know what the Sanskrit term pranapana is really applying to. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, and uh, please stay up. Okay. So so yeah, and, and just as Julia had, I had the same darn thing. You know, I was led to T. Lob saying Rampa, even though that was channeled material. At the time, I wasn't so down on channeled material because I didn't realize that it was you know I didn't understand the whole dynamic of entities just basically pumping lies into people just because they're able to you know i didn't really understand the dynamic of corruption at the time and so but but even so even even with that channeled information that really gave me a lot of permission to explore permission to to expand my my mental and emotional horizons and to really really push myself further and further and further and from there I went to astral projection and and I was reading Scott Rogo and and uh you know Robert Monroe and you know some of the other some of the other early pioneers of the of the art and the practice of astral projection or or out of body experiences and uh you know that that was that you know I became obsessed as Julia says I I became obsessed with astral projection, and I was able to do it in just a matter of weeks. Even though the, you know, I, I had I had been given training by little people when I was a, when I was a younger child, you know, I couldn't remember, you know, when I was, you know, twenty six, uh, you know, what the instructions were so clearly from the from the little ones, who who showed me literally showed me that I could do this. I just knew I could do it. I just couldn't remember the instructions, and so I went into this big overdrive uh, uh, obsession for any material that really gelled with me with regarding to astral projection. And uh, one of these days I'm going to have uh, His Holiness Fasci come on the show and, and maybe perhaps he'd be willing to talk about some of his experiences with astral projection. And uh, and so, so yeah, uh, it, the, the pranapana is that urge it is that that desire to learn that you must learn it's not that you just want to learn you must learn and you must and then the closer you get to the top of that activation mountain the more fast and furious you become about it you know i can't tell you the the, the size of the library i collected you know of all the different you know you know the emerald tablets and the uh you know the 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 tree of life and and Zohar's encyclopedia of spiritual phenomena, and, <coughs> you know all these different things. You know and and getting into you know a Bremelin the Mage and and some of these other things. You know it's just really 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 reaching and 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 you know that led me also to the Huna technologies, the Huna spiritual technologies from Max Freedom Long, which I still uh, uh, honor to this day as being, you know, some of the... going to go into bliss here just a second. Oh, it's so, so difficult to speak when one goes into bliss. Some of you may be able to feel this, Amelia and Julia. Mm. Oh, yeah. 
Okay. Uh, so, yeah, the pranapana is that activation stage that really is driving you towards your awakening, driving you towards getting that teacher, getting that practice, getting that momentum moving so that you can move into that first primary spinal sweep. That's the pranapana. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, uh, what is the mission of Kundalini? To seek out new life and new civilizations. To boldly go where no go one on. has gone before. <laughs> Because when I have my awakening, that is exactly my visual of what happens. <laughs> anyway. the, the mission of Kundalini is the enlightenment of the flesh and all bodies associated with the flesh body. So it's emotional enlightenment, it's mental enlightenment, it's physical enlightenment, it's psychological enlightenment, it's spiritual enlightenment, all at the same time. Mm. Thank you. I think I, that's the that's end. That was ten questions. Yes, I'm yes, done. I'm with them. Me just me. Uh, thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Yes, and I want to yes. thank. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the program today. Oh, so yes. I would like to thank my guests, Julia, and Rosemary, and uh, Anilla, for joining us on the program today. I would like to thank everybody. In the chat room, Manisha, Madeva Sadvi, MJ Henderson, guest uh, 1719, Fashti. I'd like to thank Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez, and I'd like to repeat that the uh, the Kundalini at the Castle is 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 going to be held uh, May 8th and 9th at the Manresa Castle in Port Townsend, Washington State. And if you want to uh, get information about this, go to I believe it's Dalton Gonzalez, Elizabeth, or um, Dalton Gonzalez dot Elizabeth at gmail dot com. I'm gonna have to write that down. Um, but anyway, uh, Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez. You can reach her on the Facebook. She's Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez there, and she has the information. Oh, she's typing it right now. So I'm gonna wait for that. I would like to see as I'm, many of you I'm, as possible at uh oh here we are. Oh I was sort of sort of ready. You were right. You were I was? Yeah. Yeah, yeah her Dalton email is Dalton Elizabeth Gonzalez, Dalton Gonzalez, Gonzalez, Gonzalez dot Elizabeth. Um Dalton Gonzalez dot Elizabeth at two. gmail dot com. Gmail. At gmail dot com. Oh, it's at? Not two. Yeah, that's an ass. She's just oh, hitting the two by mistake. Yeah. Oh, I got you. Okay. Yeah, Dalton Ela- Dalton Gonzalez dot Elizabeth at gmail dot com. Dalton Gonzalez dot Elizabeth at gmail dot com, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, come to Washington State. It's a beautiful place. Manresa Castle is a gorgeous, gorgeous place to have a Kundalini Awakening seminar. We'll be joined by a by um, a musical group there that will be be doing um, uh, some very interesting music. Um, Dharma sound. Dharma Japan, sound. Thank you. So. <laughs> Dharma <laughs> sound. And uh, it will be a very very beautiful, very very amazing weekend. And so I would like to encourage everybody to come. I hope to see. What weekend back. is it, Chrism? The ninth and tenth. Is it of May? I believe it's the. Let me look here, um, but I believe it's, yeah, coming over it's here. It's that weekend anyway of the ninth. Uh, I know the ninth of May. It's the ninth of May. The ninth and the tenth. The ninth and the tenth of, of May. May. Okay, and I'll be there. Uh, you know, a good portion of, of of May before then, with Amelia, with Rosemary, hopefully with Anilla. And uh, as many other people that want to come and and come, we'll be doing talks all over the area. 
Um, it should be a really, really good time. And uh, and I look forward to to meeting and greeting as many of you as possible. And so once again, uh, thank you, Santara. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Um, no, Chris, and thank you for the show. Just to say I'm really looking forward to the seminar and to meeting Elizabeth for the first time and other Kundalini people that um, from Facebook that I know are going to be there, meeting those people for the first time, meeting new people and being with you again. And, um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm really looking and forward. And I believe Julia will also be there, and Eileen Nora will also be there. So we'll have the whole family together. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Eileen, for calling in. Thank you, Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez. Thank you, everybody in the chat room. Thank you for those listening on their smartphones and computers. And thank you to you, future people listening in the archives. We will see you this time next week. Bye-bye.